Hey, I'm Donald Bell for Cool Tools, and in this video, we're talking about robots. Five different types of affordable chassis you can buy for your own DIY robot project. Maybe you want to build a little battle bot, maybe you want a Raspberry Pi controlled robot or an Arduino bot or whatever it is. You need a chassis to get it done. I'm going to run through five of the ones I've purchased recently because I've been robot crazy, and I'll show you what's good or bad about any of them. And if you want to buy any of them for yourself, you can use the links in the description. Here's the first robot I started with. It's the GoPygo 3 by Dexter Industries, and it's the most expensive one on this list at around $100. The reason it's so pricey is because it's more than just a chassis. It's a system that comes with its own motor and sensor board that plugs right into a Raspberry Pi computer board that you'll need to supply, and that'll also set you back another $35. It's really meant as an educational robot platform that you can build off of by adding more sensors and program using a web interface and built-in lessons. As a platform for your own robot, there are some cool things going for it. The chassis is made from a thick and sturdy acrylic and the motors have these encoder wheels and sensors on the back to more accurately read their position compared to a standard toy DC motor. But these nifty motors are also a liability. I damaged the ones I had and a new set cost me around $20 directly from the company. The other downside of this particular kit is that it's a two-wheel design with a metal caster in the back. It's fine for short indoor carpet, but it's a real pain for outdoor use. Overall though, it's a solid little robot system for the price, but more than I needed since so much of the value is wrapped up in the polished educational software that supports it. So I swung to the other extreme after this and looked for the cheapest possible robot chassis, and here it is. The Yikeshu four-wheel drive robot smart car kit is a $16 kit. It comes with four DC motors. The structure is a sandwich of thin, somewhat fragile clear acrylic. I painted mine up to give it some personality. I run into these all the time at Maker Fairs running some student robotics project. They get the job done, but they are light duty. They definitely couldn't hold up to getting stepped on or dropped off a table. But at $16, you can treat it more like a t-shirt than a robot. Now, aside from the motors, you have to bring all your own electronics to this. For me, that was a Raspberry Pi, an Adafruit motor board, a camera, a battery, and a speaker. It still all added up to around $100, but unlike the GoPiGo, Go, the components were easy to replace and recycle into other robots after I outgrew this one. The real Achilles heel of this design are the flimsy plastic brackets that are used to mount the motors to the chassis. So if you pick one of these up, I recommend adding some hot glue or E6000 into this equation so that you're not just relying on the brackets. All right, so after that, I like the idea of bringing my own components, but I wanted a design that wasn't so flimsy. So I was really happy to find the Runt Rover line from Actobotics. There are a few of these designs to choose from. I got the Whippersnapper model for around $30. Again, it's just four geared DC motors, some wheels, and a plastic frame, but Every element has a little something extra. The motors have more torque, the wheels came in gray instead of the yellow I see on every other robot, and the frame is awesome. What makes the frame so great is that it uses a textured ABS plastic. It's a little less brittle than the acrylic and easier to drill through. And the best part is that it all snaps together. Aside from the motors, which mount on little machine screws, the rest all snaps into place. It feels really solid, and there are less parts to jiggle loose. My only disappointment with this one was that I was really trying to get a robot working that could handle going over the grass in my backyard. I even purchased this little extra set of fancy wheels thinking it would help, but in the end it just doesn't have the traction. And so that brought me to the Daegu Rover 5 tracked chassis, and it's at this point that I start to wonder if maybe I have a robot addiction. This comes already assembled with two geared motors built in, a AA battery holder that fits in the middle, and a price tag of around $45. You still have to bring your own controller board and motor driver and whatever else you're looking to do. And if you want one of these fancy covers, I bought this one for around $7 from Pololu, but really I could have 3D printed something just as useful or even used some scrap wood. What's cool about this one is that the extra torque and the track treads really do allow it to crawl over grass and wood chips pretty reliably. It's also cool that you can adjust the height of the four wheels to give it more clearance or just a different look. The downside to this design, for me at least, is that the tracks on mine tend to slip off the wheels a little after a while. They haven't come off completely yet, but they kind of ride up like a bad pair of underwear. 
It's also one of the noisiest robots I have, though a little packet of gear grease is included that might take the noise down a little if I open it up. Still, this is one of my favorite robots and a great value if you want something that can handle outdoor terrain. Finally, I also got a chance to play with the Pirate Chassis from DF Robot. This is an all metal design that runs around $46. As you'd imagine, it's solid and offers a lot of room for adding your own components. I also like that it includes a little switch and a charging port for integrating a battery. The downside to this design is that it's using the same wheels, DC motors, and plastic gearboxes found in the cheapest option. So there's nothing fancier or more sophisticated about how it gets around, but the chassis is a lot more durable. Still, for my money, I think the ABS plastic and snap together design of the $30 Actobotics Runt is about as durable as you need to get for a small project robot like this. Plus, with a plastic design, there's less potential for shorting out electronics. So there you go. That's a look at five different options when it comes to hobby robot chassis. It's still just the tip of the iceberg, but hopefully there's some value in seeing some of the issues I encountered. You can find links to all five options down in the description, and you can see thousands of reader-recommended tools like these at cool-tools.org.